question number seven. The cost question. Am I willing to pay the price for my dream? Now, let's talk about the price, okay? Because we're going to have to pay a price. Statement number one. The dream is free. That's the good news. The dream is free, but the journey isn't. I'll tell you where I got that idea that the dream is free. A couple of years ago when I was writing on the book, I was in England doing a leadership conference, and Colin Sewell, who is a, a wonderful friend of mine and a terrific leader himself, we were having a breakfast. And again, when I'm writing a book, whoever I'm with, I ask them questions, and I uh, get feedback from them, and, and they just help me. That, you know, I'm just collecting material as I go through all these little questions. And Colin and I were having breakfast in, uh, uh, at our hotel before I was going to teach a leadership co conference. And, and I'll never forget, Colin looked at me, and he said, John, always remember, and here's what he said, in the beginning, all dreams are free. They really are. You don't need to pay anything to dream a dream, do you, huh? I mean, you just think about what you want to be, how much money you want to make, or, you know, what position you want to have, what friends you want to have, I mean, what home you want to live in. All dreams are free in the beginning. But the problem is, once you activate that dream, immediately the price kicks in. So the only time that you can ever have a dream and it be free is when it was a thought. If it goes beyond a thought, there's nothing free about it. So what price will you pay? Number two, the price must be paid sooner than you think. I think most people realize that there is there will be a cost to achieving the dream. They have a vague notion that someday they will have to pay a price, but they don't realize that it will have to be paid sooner than they think. If you've already started pursuing your dream, then you know what I'm talking about. As soon as you started the journey, I'll bet the price started to become an issue. Why is that? Because dreams confessed create conflict. Dreams begun create crisis. The price may be emotional in the beginning. It may be mental. It, it may be financial. But, but, but as you begin, the, the, as soon as your dream kicks in, you begin to understand there's a price to pay. Now, so the price will be paid sooner than you think. Number three, the price will be higher than you expect. Haven't you found this to be true in your life? In fact, let me tell you something. The reason we don't know the cost at the beginning of the dream is if we knew the cost, we wouldn't pursue the dream. Isn't that right? So we start off and, oh, it's free and it's going to be wonderful and, you know, I'm going to go to the top and all these wonderful, amazing things. A and then we get in and, and that cost begins to, to weigh heavily on us. But let me tell you something, it's going to be higher. So, so when I tell people about the dream, they say, well, I know it's going, to, it's going to cost me something. I stop and say, time out. Whatever you think it's going to cost you, double it. It's going to cost you more than you could ever imagine. I, I, have never, I have never met a person. Have you ever met a person who got to the top of the mountain so in, in success? I've never met a person who's got to the top of the mountain, and, 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 and they just looked at me when they got to the top of the mountain and said, you know what? I got here quicker than I ever anticipated. Oh, my goodness. And, and I, it's, it just was so much easier than I thought it would be. I've never heard a person talk about it being quicker or easier than what it really was. Number four, the price must be paid. Now, here's a, here's a key statement. The price must be paid more than once. Naively, when I started my dream, I thought, okay, I'm going to get in the dream, and then I'm going to have to pay a price for it. So I got the dream, and I paid the price for it. I thought, okay, now I paid the price for it, only to realize there's another price, and another payment, and another payment. And, and after a while, I realized if you have a great dream, you'll make payments on that dream all of your life. There won't be such a time when you'll say, oh my goodness, I've got it now, I've got it made, and so I don't have to make any more payments on it, and now I can just enjoy this wonderful, wonderful life. No, no, I promise you, there's always a, a price to pay. And, and here's what I discovered. In fact, when I, when, I, when I resigned my church in San Diego and um, gave up this very influential congregation to, to do what I do now, and that is write and teach and, and, and coach and 
speak and do all the stuff I do today. People came to me and said, why would you ever leave such an amazing job? And so, I mean, you were, I was secure in every way because of the, of the size of the congregation. And, and so I, 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 I went inside myself and said, why am I willing to leave this for where I'm going? I've only made four major moves in my life, and three of the moves that I made in my life, I got less where I was going than where, what I had when I left. So three of the four times I made a move, I've gone down. Are you with me? Okay. But I, but, so I began to think of trade-offs. And I, I did a lecture, I did a teaching uh, during this time called 10 Trade-Offs Worth Making. And the thesis of the teaching is very simple. I want you to catch it. The higher you go, the greater the trade-offs are. When you start at the beginning, there's not much trade-offs. Shoot. People say, boy, when I started off, I gave up everything. Of course you did. You didn't have anything. <laughs> Hello. Sure you gave up everything. No, no wonder you did that. Of course you gave up everything. All you had is you haul and three pieces of furniture. <laughs> you, know, you didn't have anything to give up. But can I tell you something? As you go up, every, every juncture in the growth time of going up, you have to pay another price. You've got to make a trade-off. And the higher you go, the more difficult the trade-offs are. Because when a person gets security all of a sudden, they find out very, very quickly how difficult trade-offs can become in their life. But here's what I know. For you to go to the next phase, you've got to make another trade-off. And, and in this area of the dream, you just got to keep paying the price. There's no such day as finally the price has been paid, and I'm done, and I've got it made, and I'll eat, drink, and be merry. No. It's, it, it, there's just, there's, it, it's, it's, I'll tell you how foolish that is. That's as foolish as when you were a parent, remember, and you thought when your kids left for college, your parenting was done. <laughs> huh? Remember? Touchdown! They're gone! Whoa! Now we can live our life, and hello! And then you find out your parenting is never over. As long as you've got children, it's, parenting is never over. It, the only difference is that when they make wrong decisions older, they're just much more severe consequences. In fact, after, you know, when they're 30, you say, boy, I wish they were three. Like, start all over again. I can, I can put a Band-Aid on a bruised knee. Hello. Hello. So the trade-offs, the, the payment always. And, and, and number five, it is possible to pay. Now, this is so true. It is possible to pay too much for your dream. I, I could not be fair on the cost issue without bringing this in. In fact, I would encourage you, make a short list of things you will not pay. For your dream. I'm not going to give up my values for a dream. I'm not going to give up my health for a dream. I'm not going to give up my family. I mean, there are a few things. Are you with me? Yeah. Write them down. Get them out of the way so you know here's, here's, here's what I won't give up. Now, and then once you figure out what you won't pay for the dream, figure out then how much you were willing to pay for that dream. Now, payments... Uh, everybody pays and pursue the dream. There are certain payments we pay when we, when we get into this dream. Here we are. Number one, there's the payment of the price of dealing with criticism from people who matter. The, the key is from people who matter. Go to the second paragraph. So when should you listen? And when should, should you ignore uh, what others have to say? Which critics count and which don't? Here's my advice. Listen to the critic when you are unconditionally loved by the person who criticizes you. When the person who criticizes you and me, they just say, can I tell you something? I love you if you do. I love you if you don't. Here's some thoughts. Secondly, when the criticism is not tainted by his or her personal agenda. A lot of people they have an agenda. And I want to make sure there's no agenda when, when, they, when they're coming in and coming alongside of me and, and offering criticism. Also, when the person is not naturally critical of everything. How are we doing? Because don't we know some people? They think it's their spiritual gift to be critical. <laughs> huh? And the way they criticize, you'd think to get paid for it. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Huh? So, I mean, if they're critical of everything, just understand. They, they, you know, hello, what's new? 
Next, the person will continue giving support after giving advice. One of the things I do, because there are times in my life when I have to maybe say a difficult thing to a person that I greatly love. And, and when, it, when, it, when I have those occasions, I'm very careful to let them know these are my thoughts. This is what I think. But I want to tell you something. You still got my support. You don't have to do what I think. You don't have to, you don't have to agree with what I said. And you still got my support. You got my love. I'm with you. I'm with you. But I, but I also just want you to know, I want you to see the other side. And finally, he or she has knowledge and success in the area of the criticism. In other words, they have knowledge and success in the area that they're criticized. In other words, they've been there, they've done it, they've done it well, and so therefore they can pass it on to you. So there's the price of criticism that you have to pay. Secondly, there's the price of overcoming your fears. Let me ask you a question. How many of you, when you think of the pursuit of your, of your dream, have, have fear in that pursuit? Can I see your hand? Thank you very much. This is, this is a question, this is not an IQ question, that was an honesty question. For a person would raise their hand and say, or would not raise their hand and say, I have no fear in pursuing my dream. I would tell them that they don't need a leadership class and they certainly don't need a conference on dreams, they need therapy. <laughs> because a dream is way beyond us, is it not? It takes us to places we've never been. It, it exposes us to things that we do not know. And if you're just feeling real hunky-dory and just amazingly secure and happy and have no fear, you just, you know, you're on drugs. <laughs> you know, you, you're, you're, you don't, you're, 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 you're not into reality. We all have fear. And I'm going to talk to you about how I overcame and handled the fear. Not how I, not how I got fear to be absent in my life, but how I overcame. Came fear. I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment, but let me read this one paragraph first to you. All dreams are outside our comfort zone. Leaving that zone is a price we must pay to achieve them. In his book, The Success Principles, How to Get from Where You Are to Where You Want to Be by Jack Canfield, here's what he writes. This first next statement I, I underlined in my notes. Think of your comfort zone as the prison you live in, a largely self-created prison. It consists of a collection of can'ts, must, must-nots, and other, other unfounded beliefs formed from all the negative thoughts and decisions you have accumulated and reinforced during your lifetime. Every fear is like a bar of that prison. Okay, now let me just talk to you out of my own life for a moment. Again, in my pursuit of adding value to people and, and, and when I was a pastor building a great church for God, etc., I had a lot of fear. And, and it bothered me because no matter how successful I was becoming, I still had fear. I had fear of what happens if it doesn't stay successful. What happens if I don't make the right decision and it, it, it begins to break apart. I mean, I had all these questions. And I was trying to get rid of fear. And I one day realized that I should not focus on getting rid of the, rid of the fear because the fears are within me, and there are many fears that are just natural. There are some fears that are even good for us. What I realized is that I cannot get rid of my fear, but I can increase my faith. And when I quit trying to get rid of the negative and started to try to reinforce the positive, here's what happened. Let's say in the beginning my fears were a, a, a five and my faith was a two. Whatever is dominant in the emotion is what controls you. So my goal was, oh, of course, I'd like to get my five fears down to a four or to a three, and maybe I can get them down some, but I can tell you what I'll do. I may, I may lessen them, but I'll never, I'll never lose them. So what I do is I started building up my faith. And the moment that I can get my faith higher than my fears, because I will be led, <coughs> excuse me, I will be led and my behavior will be based upon which is the stronger emotion, faith or fear. If fear is stronger than faith, fear wins every time. If faith is stronger than fear, faith wins every time. So what you want to do is, is this price of, of that we have of fear in our dreams. What you want to do is nourish the positive, nourish the things that, that are going well, nourish your faith, nourish your belief, 
and, and let, the, the, let the fears and the discouragements and all those things, let them settle down at a lower level. And if your faith is higher than your fears, you will do things that you still fear, but you'll have faith that you can do them successfully. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Finally, there's the price of hard work. There just is. Recently, I spoke to employees at a company in Denver, and an attendee named Rich Melman came up to me and handed me this quote. It is hard to be 100% better than your competition, but you can be 1% better in 100 ways. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is I will do more than belong. I will participate. I will do more than care. I will help. I will do more than believe, I will practice. I will do more than be fair, I will be kind. I will do more than forgive, I will forget. I will do more than dream, I will work. I will do more than teach, I will inspire. I will do more than earn, I will enrich. I will do more than give, I will serve. I will do more than live. I will grow. And I will do more than suffer. I will triumph. There's a price that we have to pay. Now, let me say one more comment on the, on the, on the cost question before I go to, to number eight. And here's, here's, here's what I want to say to you. Most people achieve the level of their dream based upon the price that they're willing to pay. That's a fact. Most people stop their dream when the price gets too high. When most people kind of leave their dream, it is almost always a price issue. It, the dream was going to cost them more than they wanted to pay. So it's a great question, the cost question. Am I willing to pay the price for my dream? Let's go to number eight. 